Hey, I'm Angela Walters, and I'm excited to welcome you back to my class, Mastering Rulers. And this is actually a free class that I'm putting together that shows you how to use my three new rulers that I've designed with Creative Grids. Now, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, check out the description box below because I have links to the previous videos. Now for this lesson, we're gonna be using the Taj ruler. Taj is my curvy pointed ruler that's gonna be perfect for quilting those arcs, but it also has a cutout that's gonna give you a leaf-like shape. We're gonna use that leaf shape to quilt a border design around the narrow borders of our quilt. I'll show you how to quilt it on a sewing machine as well as a long arm, and we'll talk about how to use a little bit of traveling to line them up all in a row. Well, nothing left to do except to get to it. Start by placing the foot inside of the ruler. And I'm actually gonna start kind of towards the middle of one side. Then I'm gonna position the ruler so that it's centered in my border. Since that's the edge of my border, I need to remember that about a quarter inch of that's gonna be taken up with the binding. And I'm gonna quilt just along the inside of the Taj ruler. Returning to where I started. Then I'm gonna keep the ruler in place and travel back along the ruler until I get to one of these reference marks. Once I get to that reference mark, then all I have to do is shift the ruler, taking a moment to make sure that it's centered, and then I'm gonna repeat quilting along the inside of that leaf shape, except I'm gonna stop when I hit that previously quilted line. Like that. The reason I'm gonna stop at that line is I want these leaves to look like they're laying on top of each other. Keeping the ruler in the same place will make it easy to backtrack along that line until I get to that reference point. And I'm just gonna continue along, making sure my ruler is centered. And I'm gonna keep going until I get close to the corner. I'm not gonna worry about turning the corner until I have a leaf shape that extends into that corner area. Once I quilt a leaf that crosses over into this border corner, I need to start thinking about rotating the ruler. What I'll do is position it so that it starts turning the direction I want it to go, ensuring that it takes up the most space possible and that it's not gonna run off the edge of my border. So this looks like a good position. I'm still gonna stop when I get to the previously quilted leaf. Going to that reference point, and now I can rotate my ruler again. This time, I'm gonna be going the direction I want to head. And now that I'm going horizontally, I'm still gonna quilt along it, stopping when I hit that previously quilted line. Traveling along till I get to that reference mark, and then repositioning. Now, as I'm quilting along the ruler, I'm using both of my hands to hold the ruler and press down as I quilt. This is where the Creative Grid's grip on the back of the rulers come in handy. It's gonna help keep the ruler from slipping, allowing me to have the most control of my quilting. Now you can hold the ruler any way you want, just be sure your fingers are well away from the inside edge of the ruler and away from the needle. And remember, we're not gonna worry about the corner until we have a shape that extends into that area. And it looks like this one will be it. I'm still gonna travel along to that reference point and then rotate, taking a moment to position the ruler in the direction that takes up the most space. I could even slide it down a little bit if I wanted to. Keeping the ruler in place will help me travel along that previously quilted line, giving me a nice, perfect-ish looking design. You might be wondering what's going on with this hot pink thread. I'm using this bright thread so that you can see what I'm doing on the camera. If you bought the coordinating thread collection, this would be a great place to use your light gray thread. I'm loving how this looks, but I want to show you a fun variation of this design that just uses a little overlapping. Instead of stopping at the previously quilted leaf, you could go all the way around the leaf and it's going to make them overlap, just giving it a slightly different look. You're still going to travel to that reference line. You're still going to reposition and take a moment to make sure that it's centered. And I'm going to quilt just along the inside of the Taj ruler. This variation is perfect if you want a design that's a little bit more dense or you want it to look a little bit different than just your regular kind of leaf. And that's definitely a fun effect. Now eventually we're gonna wanna make our row of leaves run into each other, and I promise it's not as hard as you might think. 
one I have one last leaf. And here you can see my next one is gonna run into that previous one. What I'm gonna do is just position it until it touches it. And then I'm going to quilt along it. But when I run into that previously quilted line, what I'm gonna do is just take a second and just travel along it. Just kind of get it as close as I can. Reposition my ruler and then continue on. Then it kind of gives it that look that it's laying on top of each other. And there we have that beautiful leafy design that wraps its way around that border. See, that wasn't so hard, right? Now that you've seen how to do it on a sewing machine, let's just take a brief look at it on a long arm. It's not any harder on a long arm, but the hand position will be just a little different. Start by positioning the ruler to the center of the border as normal. Then placing my hand so that I have firm control on both sides, I'm gonna quilt along the inside of my ruler, traveling along the edge and stopping at that reference point. The main difference is I can't use both hands to hold the ruler in place since one hand is driving the machine. So I have to use one hand to hold it. Since I'm holding it in one hand, I have to be careful to keep my fingers well out of the way of the machine. So my fingers are spread, I'm holding along the edges of the ruler, but still pushing down and holding it in place. Keeping the ruler in place is gonna help keep that travel line on the previously quilted line, resulting in a much better design. I'm also trying to hold the ruler at the widest point. I don't wanna hold it too much to one end or the other, because that can result in the ruler coming up and bouncing over the ruler foot, which is not a good thing. And just like on a sewing machine, when turning the corners, I'm gonna wait until my leaf extends out into the space, then rotate the ruler so that it takes up the most space possible. I'm still gonna quilt along it, stopping at the previously quilted line, and then traveling back to that reference point. Now, as I turn the corner and start quilting vertically, I find it's a little bit easier to hold the ruler from the front and the back. That keeps me from having to tweak my hand to the side to hold along the widest point. Now, as you're practicing quilting with Taj, be sure to try different hand positions to find what feels best for you just as long as it feels comfortable and your fingers are well away from that needle. Eventually I'm gonna make my way around the whole border and then it will be time to join my rows of leaves. I'll do this the same way that I do it on a sewing machine. I'll quilt the leaf stopping at the previously quilted line. I'll backtrack along the line I just quilted. I'll rotate the ruler so that I can easily travel around the last leaf that I quilted so that I can get to the other side of the leaf that I'm quilting currently Again, making it stop when it runs into that previously quilted line. And of course, the most important thing to remember is that it doesn't have to be perfect. Just quilt the leaves so they fill in that border and it's gonna look great. If you're quilting along with me on the Checkered Stars quilt, we're gonna use that design in two of the thinner teal borders. If you're not sure where to place it, just check out the description box below where I have links to quilting diagrams that will tell you where to put each design. Be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss any of these videos and check out the next video where we quilt a different part of our quilt.